This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. We are still in the document part 032, Miscellaneous Plotting, link in the video description. In this video, I'm going to talk about the polar plot command. Now, this code does work in octave with one small adjustment. Instead of the word polar plot, all one word, all lowercase, in octave, it's just polar. You just take the word plot off the end, and then the code will work. But I am going to be showing it for MATLAB, so I'm going to be writing it out as polar plot. Let me run this section. All right, and I generate three different figures here. And these look quite a bit different than the graphs I've been showing before because they are not Cartesian plots. They do not have X and Y axes, they are polar plots. Now I think often the first time students come across polar plots, they're a little bit freaked out and not sure how things work. But I think it's actually a very reasonable way to specify locations in space. In a Cartesian coordinate plane, you're given two numbers, x value and a y value. And you can think of yourself as a little figure walking on a flat surface, and basically you align yourself along the x-axis and walk as far as the value of the x number, and then you align yourself along the y-axis and you walk as far as the y value. And wherever you end up is where the point is placed. And sure, if you live in a city that's like arranged on a grid, this is actually a fairly reasonable way to get around. But suppose you're just standing in an open field. It makes much more sense to say, oh, turn toward this particular object and then walk this particular distance. And that's pretty much what polar plot is saying. There are still two inputs to determine any of the points on the curve. And the first input is some sort of angle. So orient yourself in this direction. And then the next value is a distance, which I'm going to call radius. And it basically says, okay, then walk that distance in that direction. And all of these blue pixels in the circles here and the start of a spiral are generated from doing that for a bunch of different values and then just putting a blue pixel at the place where the person ends up. So, you know, you angle this direction and walk this distance and you put a little blue pixel right there. In the code, I've got first a vector that I have named angle. It goes from zero to pi and the step size is pi over 100. When you're generating vectors using intervals for your graphs, you really want to make sure the step size is small enough that you don't get sharp lines in your graph. So for example, if instead of pi over 100, I did pi over 5, what would this first graph look like? Well, it would look like this right here. They look quite a bit different. In fact, if you told me this was a circle, I would say, get the heck out of town. That looks like a pentagon to me. It's important to realize at this point that all the graphs in MATLAB, by default, are composed of straight lines between the points that are given. That's true for the xy graphs as well as the polar graphs. So if you don't have enough values to make the curve look smooth, if your straight lines between points are not small enough to look like a very gradual curve, what you're going to get is these very sharp blocky shapes. Now in this case, the fix is real easy. Just instead of a larger step size, let's make it smaller. Pi over 100 is considerably smaller than pi over 5. And now the curves look smooth. Are they in reality smooth? No. There are straight lines being drawn between points, but my eye can't see those straight lines, so it looks smooth to me. So I've got my angle vector right here. I calculate my radiuses just by the sign of the angle. On a polar plot graph, instead of a wavy line, that's going to look like a circle. And then the command to make the graph is simply polar plot, parentheses, the angle vector, comma, the radius vector. In the same way that it's very important when you're just using the plot command to put in your x values, comma, your y values, or your independent axis, comma, your dependent axis, it's also important in polar plot to put in your angles first and then your distances or radii, or whatever the name is that you're giving to the magnitude. So then I use figure to move on to a second figure. And for this one, I'm going to graph the cosine of those angles as the radius. And this also generates a circle but it's a different location on the graph. And finally, figure for a third figure, and I get my radiuses calculated as e raised to the power of the angle, and I plot that one, and it looks like this. Looks to me like the start of a spiral. Almost all of the formatting that we've seen on regular plots works on polar plots. So let me run this section here. And this is the graph that I got as a result. A lot of weird things going on here. My angle is just from zero to pi. I used a step size of a quarter. That's not actually particularly small. You can see I only literally got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points on this particular graph. I use the polar plot function. I pass in my angles. I pass in my radiuses, or radii is the proper term. 
I use D for diamonds, G for green, dash dash for a dash line, and we see it right there. I made the line width thicker, line width of 3, and a marker size of 20. For my title, I used the alpha, beta, gamma again, same as before, and I made the font size larger, font size 18. X label and Y label don't actually work for polar plots, but if you take a second to think about it, that should make a lot of sense, because there are no X or Y axes on a polar plot. Axis specifications, or the axis function I should say, does work on polar plots, but the meaning of the numbers that you give it is a little bit different. This zero here is not a minimum X value, it's a minimum angle. This 90 is not a maximum X value, it's a maximum angle. So the reason I get this quarter slice of the circle is because I went 0 to 90. If instead I go 0 to 180 and rerun this section, now I get a half circle. Now for the 0 to 1, this is the magnitude. So going from 0 to a radius of 1. If I change it to 2, let's look again and remind ourselves what we had before. We had this, and I change this 1 to a 2 and rerun it. Now I have a further out radius. I can see my little circle here, but it appears smaller because it takes up less of the total space. And of course, these two lines of code are identical to this one line of code. I just wanted to use a variable name because I find that people forget the square brackets when there's both parentheses and square brackets required. That's all for this video. The next video is going to pick up right where this one leaves off, and I'm going to be covering logarithmic plotting, bar graphs, pie charts, and just a variety of other plotting topics.